We're going to go head up and take a look at the uh, hillside fire. It's a fire from 2019. Uh, ended up being about 200 acres. We ended up losing six homes, 18 homes were damaged. The biggest challenge has been the wind. Uh, we had that sustained wind of 30 miles per hour and we've got much higher than that. During that time period, uh, we were under a red flag warning for a couple days. There were strong, gusty winds, dry conditions, uh, poor humidity recovery overnight. It was dispatched around 1.30 in the morning. I remember from that night, I looked off and I could see the glow up there. And so I knew this would, had the potential to be a significant fire. Obviously people are home and uh, they're sleeping at that point. It was a matter of minutes before the fire had come down from Highway 18 and started to impact homes. Uh, to try and do evacuations and notify people when you have a fast uh, encroaching fire like that, um, proved to be quite challenging. Chief Yeager will tell you that uh, he actually had to force, force his way into homes to wake people up. When I got up here, I, there was so much fire, so much ember cast catching everything on fire that I just said, you know what, our priority is always life safety. And I'm literally pounding on doors at 1.32 in the morning and knowing that I'm about to go into somebody's house and they are dead asleep. I will tell you, every firefighter that responds to any call wants to do everything. They want to conserve the property. They, uh, they want to protect the life. When we have these fires, resources get stretched out thin. We had uh, multiple areas that were impacted at the same time, which was challenging for the firefighters because we were spread out. You've got to take care of evacuations and try to protect the homes the best you can. We'll establish an ICP on any fire. For this particular fire, we knew that it had the potential to be a complex incident with structures threatened and involved. So we set up our incident command post at Wildwood Park. Whenever you see the small SUVs, those are the vehicles with the battalion chiefs in them and they're the ones that are responsible for the command and control portion. And the incident commander will ultimately be the one that's in charge of the entire incident. A lot of times when you're at a command post, you don't have a full visual of the fire. So you're strictly relying on, on the feedback that you get from the crews. One of our hand crews had came up to me and I was up on the north end over here. Topoleski came up and said, hey, I think we can go direct here on this flank if you're comfortable with it. And it was like, yeah, Matt, if you feel comfortable, then yeah, let's engage. And let me tell you, I think he prevented a whole lot of that lateral spread. The next day, I was amazed at the work that our firefighters did, the hand crew. It was shocking to me the amount of uh, homes that they saved. There's a lot that goes into this. I mean, we're anticipating the build out of the call. So you can imagine that this parking lot that we're in now is empty, has two vehicles, the whole thing was full. You have the unified staff that comes from the Forest Service and all the other agencies that you're in unified command with. There is uh, logistical support. This whole area ends up becoming utilized for a 200 acre fire. From our perspective at the command post or where we set up and we run the incident from, we're a support mechanism. Our only goal is to support the incident. And that's what we consider ourselves as part of a team, right? We're looking at what resources do I need big picture? Where can this go and impact big picture? And what actions can we take strategically to mitigate the incident? I'm Gary Yeager, a Battalion Chief with the San Bernardino County Fire Department. I'm Dan Wooders, Battalion Chief with San Bernardino County Fire. I'm homegrown and I'm proud to serve you. And I'm proud to serve you.